Good morning. As we've welcomed those online, thank you for being here. It's uh, wonderful that we have greater opportunity now to welcome each other in the name of Jesus, to share some smiles, and uh, to sing out his praise today. Um, on this Pentecost Sunday, right after worship, there are some snacks and coffee downstairs, juice for the kids, um, and then we'll get into our Bible study, the screw tape letters. I'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, I was telling Gloria um, that uh, last week during the congregational meeting, it's rare that the snacks get a mention, and I'm not sure they were in the minutes, but when uh, new business came up, uh, Todd said, who made these cookies? So th those were spectacular. And uh, Mrs. Weems has made some chocolate-covered uh, yellow cake today, which um, Carl and I, we tested it, quality control. Um, come down and have a slice with us. We'd love for that. And there's Sunday school for the children as well. Thank you for being a part of that congregational meeting. Um, it was a joy to look at ministry ahead and to head that way together. Um, on June 6th, we will be at the rail for communion. So slowly getting back to where we were. Today you'll be able to have the uh, offering plate passed uh, between the rows. And uh, after worship, you can leave as, as you will, instead of from the back only. Today, as we turn to God's word on Pentecost, we see that Pentecost account in which God the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the apostles who are empowered from the inside out. And they point to, uh, because of the Holy Spirit, the saving work of Jesus. And that same Holy Spirit continues to empower God's people to this day. I look forward to sharing that with you. We'll share our invocation seated today because I want to share a little bit about our opening song. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll sing together, Breathe on Me, Breath of Life. Just hang on one second, Jared, if you would. Um, some reminders about the Holy Spirit. Um, Often on Pentecost, the focus is on him and on his mighty work, and it will be today as well. But sometimes the Holy Spirit is called um, the uh, um, timid or shy person of the Trinity because he always points to Jesus. From our uh, small catechism, uh, Luther explaining the Apostles' third, third petition um, or article, he says... Um, and you, you say these words often. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then in uh, that catechismal uh, way, he asks a question and provides the answer. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, right, made us more and more like Jesus, and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true, we say together. Um, that is the beauty of Pentecost. The spirit that was poured out that day, uh, less than two months after Jesus was raised from the dead, continues to breathe on us today. So we stand to sing.
You may be seated as we turn our hearts in a time of confession. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. We pause in a time of private uh, reflection and prayer that will fold into our confession together. Thank you that you meet us in uncomfortable silence, that we may be still and search our hearts, that you can bring healing. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your boundless mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We speak together. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that, by your grace, we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand with me. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. We pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Together we pray, Lord, in your mercy. We remain standing to sing, You Alone Can Rescue. We who have just been assured of forgiveness in Christ, we say these words, for what can a man, or Jesus said these words, for what can a man give in return for his soul? And in that absolution, we're reminded Jesus gave his all for you and for me. We sing.
As we turn to God's word that the Holy Spirit has inspired, we speak God's word to each other in the words of Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. There we go. You know when I sit down. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Amen. You may be seated. And thanks for bringing us the word today. The first reading is from the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, beginning at the first verse. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. 
Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are indeed cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second chapter of Acts, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, as of fire, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were be bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand with me in honor of the Holy Gospel, which comes from the 15th chapter of John this morning. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will, will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. 
And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. Do we have children to, to share with today? Awesome. We'll invite those kids forward for a children's message. Oh, I see them coming. They're coming. I got the cousin crew. I, I think a couple are hockey players. So I am happy about that. Got to be on your guard. <laughs> oh, here they come. Nice. Nice. And then some. Fantastic. It's the cousin crowd. I, I, I'm prepared. You're used to that, too, by the way. <laughs> After the week I've had, yes, I'm prepared for this. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Good, do I have everybody? Yep, wow, how was your week? Good, anything special happen? No, no birthdays, no, 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 oh, all right, that's good. So, uh, hey, I wanna to talk to you guys about uh, someone pretty special, the Holy Spirit. You ever heard of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yeah, he's part, of, he's part of the triune God, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So over the years, I've learned lots of different things about the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think about different things. I see things, and it makes me think of the Holy Spirit. Um, I think a long time ago, a long time ago, um, when I was a kiddo, <laughs> she giggles, yes, I know. Um, anyway, I had a had somebody to explain to me that the Holy Spirit's kind of like the wind. Think about the wind. It was even in the, in the scripture lessons today. It was really great. And what does wind do? What do you see? It blows, away. it blows. But can you really see the wind? No, but you can see what it does. It's kind of like the Holy Spirit. Cool. Yep. Um, another thing that makes me think of the Holy Spirit is a dove. Why a dove? Can you ever think why a dove? Mm, it's even on some of the stained glass windows. I think I think of the dove because um, when Jesus was baptized, remember the dove came down? Remember? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I think of a dove. But <clears throat> this is going to sound maybe a little weird to you guys, but um, I also think of Plato. What? The Holy Spirit is Plato? That seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? But here's the thing. The Holy Spirit does three things for us. One, he gives us our faith, right? And I remember the first time I got Plato, oh, I was so excited. Let's see if I can get this open. Here, you all need one too. Okay, pick your color. I should have known better. All right, gentlemen, thank you for letting the ladies go first. All right, All right so, wow, like the Holy Spirit, I just gave you something. But he gives you your faith, right? So we have Plato now, don't we? All right, let's see if I can dig a little bit out. Let's try not to get it in the carpet. Okay. All right, so the Holy Spirit, I think of Plato. Open that. Open that, please. <laughs> you bet. I, had, I should maybe have you open mine. Okay, there's your lid. All right, so I think Plato. Here's why. Um, I can guide the Plato in different ways, can I? And I can create things with the Plato, right? 
Um, let's make everybody's favorite a snake, right? Everybody can make the snake, right? Okay, I'll open yours too. All right, so the Holy Spirit gives us our faith, and he's also the creator. Does that make sense? Oh my goodness, it's stuck. There we go. All right, so the Holy Spirit gives us our faith, and when we make things with Plato, have you ever made something with Plato and somebody goes, oh my gosh, can you teach me how to do that? Yeah? Guess what? The Holy Spirit's also a teacher. He teaches us about Jesus and God and develops our faith. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is a giver of our faith, and he teaches us about our faith and about Jesus and God. And then last but not least, you ready for the last one? He guides us. Now, how does Plato have to do with guiding? So when you ask somebody to teach you, to make something with your Play-Doh. That's guiding, exactly. Isn't that cool? You know what the Holy Spirit guides us to do? He, good stuff, exactly. He guides us to give us, to, to share God's news about Jesus dying on the cross with our friends and our family. Is that cool? See, the Play-Doh was a good idea. So, as we play with our Play-Doh, I want you to think about the Holy Spirit, okay? Because he gives us our faith. He teaches us about our faith and about Jesus, and then he guides us to share the good news of Jesus with others. Does that sound good? All right. All right. We got some great creativity happening, right? Okay, let's put our Play-Doh, huh? I have played with putty, and that's pretty fun too, John. Pot. Yeah. Pot. You made a pudding pot? Nice. Cool. All right, let's put our Play-Doh back in our containers. Can we put our Play-Doh back in our containers? Good luck with that one. Can you put it in your app for just a second? Good job. We'll just put it on gently. Okay, you did make a snake. Put the snake back in the container. Fantastic. How are we doing over there? Oh, we have a professional Play-Doh cleaner upper. He's doing the carpet. Good job, mom and dad. He's got it all. Perfect. Put it in the container now, please. Okay. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, remember, is the giver of our faith. He teaches us about our faith, and he guides us to share our faith. Sound good? Will you join me in prayer? All right, here we go. Dear gracious God, thank you so much for all the many blessings you give us. We thank you mostly for Jesus dying on the cross on our, for our sins. We thank you for giving us the Bible so the Holy Spirit can guide and teach us about all the wonderful things you have done for us. And Lord Jesus, please help us feel the Holy Spirit guide us into sharing about your love for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Go back, have fun with your play dough. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson. So, lollipops last time. Yeah. Play you know. I'm thinking as God's word moves forward, it's like a new bicycle. I'm just thinking, of, you know. Maybe. There's, I don't a, know. there's a high standard for you. <laughs> Glad to have the kids come forward. Um, as the ushers come forward for the offering plates, part of our worship are the gifts that um, we give in our offering, as well as the time and talents, the experience and the influence God has given us, that others may come to be his disciples and follow him with us. song here too.
gracious God, we give to you just a small portion of what you bless us with each day. We ask that you would multiply these gifts, that your church may grow, that your spirit may have his way with us and with those you draw to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. We uh, stand to sing, and uh, it, this song, too, is a prayer. Speak, O Lord. It's a prayer that God's Spirit would be active in our lives today as we hear His Word. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. We turn to that Pentecost account today and we look briefly at the uh, account that the prophet Ezekiel uh, sees uh, as God shows him great power. And in the words that are given to us in our readings today, we see that Holy Spirit of God. And we see life that is poured out and also poured in to God's people. As our window project moves forward, 
um, pictures no longer um, uh, give us the true picture. We see the, the new hues and colors, or at least the ones that were hidden. And they come to us as the glass and the leading is deoxidized on the outside. The beauty that's been there before our eyes for many, many years, but hidden in some ways. This is the um, artwork that's above the 7th Street doors. Um, gorgeous hues that I hadn't seen before until they were cleaned and renewed. And our neighbors now from the outside can see what's there, no longer obscured by a milky coating, yes, to protect, but that hid what was inside. And now we just have pictures of the before because they have been deoxidized and they'll have a protective Lexan over them. We look forward to that being completed. The after can really show us um, the beauty that was there, but also the workmanship of Ali and Jonathan, a husband and wife team that have been working here. And I think there are some um, comparisons to what God the Holy Spirit does in our lives. I have not seen yet, when all the lights are on here and it's dark outside, what will shine out. I look forward to that. When we can have the light in here, God provides the outside light and we are blessed in this reverent place as we sing his praises. But it is also God's desire that the light within us would shine into our communities, would shine into our homes and where we work and where we play and where God gives us influence. In Jesus' words, Matthew quotes him in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Sometimes that can create some, how do I do that? At Pentecost, we see though God pours into us what he wants others to see. We receive and then follow him. There's also the comparisons of before and after. We saw that in Peter's life. We saw that in the apostles' lives. Before Pentecost and after, Luke shares that time when Peter was around the fire, warming his hands, and Jesus was inside, and people were hurling insults and false charges in a trumped-up trial. Peter was bold enough to make his way in there, but there was fear as well. Luke shares the account this way. Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're talking about. This is the third time that Peter said, I don't know who Jesus is. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Peter was in such a place he could see what was going on. He, he probably didn't want to talk to anybody. He wanted his ears on what's going on inside. Could you imagine that glance? That eye-to-eye -eye conversation, if you will? Luke says, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord... How he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And went out and wept bitterly. Before Pentecost, we see Peter, yes, courageous and bold at times, but when his own qualities fail him, he's left with fear and regret and the knowledge that I have failed to do what I should for my friend and my Lord and my Savior. And Peter was not alone. And the evening of Easter, John says this, 
On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Days later, they'll be behind locked doors again. There was fear. They worried that the torture and the death that Jesus experienced would be theirs as well. And they huddled together. Good thing in community. They were huddling in fear. But after, when that spirit is poured out, Luke again gives us the description from Acts chapter 2. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And Luke continues, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished. So the Spirit has them begin to speak good news about Jesus. And people can hear it in their mother tongue. Less than two months before, they're huddled behind locked doors. Even though Jesus has risen from the dead. The people they are proclaiming to witnessed what took place, the place of the skull. And they have been hearing rumors for weeks about this Jesus who has been raised from the dead. No longer fearful, no longer hiding. Possibly some hearing who placed Jesus themselves on the cross. And they proclaim it boldly. Because they know the message that they've received brings life as they now are empowered by an indwelling spirit to speak of Jesus and his work for us. Yes, God pours in what's needed. That was not natural for the apostles even to have such boldness and courage and joy in sharing news with those who just recently had taken Jesus' life, that Jesus had risen. We too have a before and an after in our lives. With uh, some dear Christian brothers in the last week's been going through the Gospel of Matthew chapter by chapter. I shared with you last week, each day we ask ourselves, what's Jesus saying to me in this chapter from the good news? And what am I going to do about it? And then we get in a a meeting once a week and share where we believe God is stirring in our hearts. And in Matthew 15, we uh, hear Jesus say some real clear words about the heart of humanity, about our hearts. He says, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. Maybe you've had that experience. You say something, um, too many examples, uh, right? But it The words come out, and then we see them out there. And we're like, wow, it says a lot about what's inside of me. What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, and adultery. And we know from earlier in Matthew, we may think, oh, I haven't killed anybody, haven't committed adultery. Jesus says, think that through again, the Spirit of those commandments. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. And that list that Jesus shares isn't what God desires to be shining out of our lives into our world. And so we need that reminder That what God wants to see in our lives, that others will witness and give him glory, he pours into us. In that Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, words that are true for us today. You heard them earlier. You are the light of the world. And the light that God wants others to see, that they may 
give him glory, God places into you by his Holy Spirit. As you open that inspired word of God and he molds and shapes you, we kind of wish it was a little more like Pentecost, like all at once, but God tends to grow us day in and day out, and his work continues. He declared it upon you. You are the light of the world, and our great God, God the Holy Spirit, continues to pour that light into our lives, and we can thank him and count on that being a part of us. What a remarkable Old Testament lesson. Um, as you hear it, you know, studied a bit this week, as Anne spoke those words, you, you hear it a little bit differently. As Ezekiel was called in to see this, dry bones, and, and they come together and he can hear them clicking, right? Hopelessness. Dry bones don't have life. And God even says, can these have life? Ezekiel says, uh, Lord, you know. I, I wonder if he was evading the answer, right? Um, doesn't look good, right? Wasn't that God's point? This is a place of death. Dead people don't do good things. The bones come together. And God places ligaments and tendons on them and muscle and the text says and he began to stretch skin over these once skeletons and then life is breathed into them and they live it was a message for god's people that god would restore them to that promised land so important because the messiah the anointed one of god would be born there who would give his life and would provide forgiveness to us and to the world. But it's a message that God, by his Holy Spirit, brings life today, even to hearts that are dead. Hearts that can't reach out to God, that have no heartbeat, if you will. Perhaps God has you in a place where you know, like Peter, I can't produce this light within me. There's a film that obscures the work that God is doing. There's sin there, and there's my own reason that gets in the way. And we need God's Holy Spirit to clear that film out and to pour in the light and the authority and the love and the forgiveness we need. That that love and that forgiveness can radiate out into our homes and into everywhere God gives us influence. God said in Ezekiel, and I will put my spirit within you. God will dwell in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, and then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. God continues to pour anew. It wasn't a one-time thing in your baptism, though we rejoice. We'll hear that next week in Peter's words on Pentecost. That in baptism, God takes your sin, but pours into you his Holy Spirit. Pours in that light of God into your hearts. That first Pentecost, when what was said would be so starkly contrasting with the death of Jesus just weeks before. There's a contrast in our before and after as well, as God lovingly pours himself into us as he has promised. We rejoice that he does that, that we may love, that we may bring forgiveness to others, even when it's hard, that his glory would be seen. Let's pray. Gracious God, what love you have for us that not only would you take our sin away and claim us as your people, you would declare us to be light in this world, 
What love you have that you pour in the light that we need to show to others. And though we give and give, it, there, there won't be a, a vacuum left behind because you anoint and you breathe out fresh every day all that we need. Lord God, help us to rejoice in how you clear away the film over our hearts. Rejoice at the newness of life you bring. And Lord, let that life flow in acts of love and acts of forgiveness into the lives of people around us. That your kingdom would grow, that others would experience the, your breath, your anointing, your indwelling Holy Spirit. We thank you for your work on Pentecost and your work each day. We thank you that you continue your work in us, and we are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand with me as we share our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, and we'll speak of that loving Holy Spirit in this as well. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you for joining in that. You may be seated as Dan uh, raises the prayers of the church for us. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ and for all people according to their needs. Lord, guide our hearts to your will and your purpose. Restore us and show your light and shine your light into our lives. Shepherd of Israel, in your son, Jesus Christ, you have sought out your sheep and gathered us with them in your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every evil and snare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, as you breathe new life into the world through the resurrection of your Son, so now by your Holy Spirit, breathe new life into your church that, freed by his gospel, we may always confess the name of Jesus Christ, the only name given among men by which we must be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son has called us to love our brothers. Turn us in love toward the neighbors closest to us, especially within our own homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and truth, laying down our lives as Christ did for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought peace between man and God. By your gift of good government, grant peace and good days to our citizens and between the nations of the world, that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Bless and keep our first responders, our law enforcement, our military personnel, 
and our veterans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the first fruits of Christ's life from the dead, you secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences. Bless those who suffer among us, especially Debbie Redman, Linnea Didi, Debbie Thomas, Russell Redding, Cami Kinghorn, Tyler Taysom, Mark, Ed Guggen, Bernie, Ashlyn, Marcia Simon, Carol Mindy, Tim Geralts, Mark Garner, and Lynn Winter. Grant them aid in their healing and comfort in their struggles and assistance to those attending to their needs and even more so, true immortal health in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray that you would be with Don and Vicki as they make their trip to Texas. Give them safe travels and enjoyment all along the way. And be with Madeline to be able to succeed in the LPN schooling. O Lord, our shepherd, you calm all fears in this valley of the shadow of death, and you prepare the holy table of your son's testament in the presence of our enemies. Grant us repentant and faithful hearts in every tribulation or besetting sin. Lead us to find comfort and strength in your overflowing mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Be with the families of those who have lost loved ones recently. We lift up the family of Ethel Miles, who joined Life Eternal earlier this month. Comfort her family and bless them as they seek you for peace during these days of grieving. Be with our family members who are homebound in nursing homes and assisted living centers. We especially pray for Ed Marlene Ledvina, Marguerite Erickson, Yvonne Lanier, Maxine Mikeley, Tally Peterson, Shirley Maloney, and my mom Rose. Please cause us to reflect on these godly lives and acknowledge the gifts that they have shared over the years and the love they have shared with each of us. Give strength and courage and an added measure of loving patience to the family members and the health care workers attending to their needs. May they reflect your love in all that they do for their care. Keep them in our daily prayers and thoughts as they seek your deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessings upon the ministries of Pastor Roger Settlemeyer and the Congregation of Emmanuel Lutheran in Twin Falls, along with Pastor Stephen and the ministries here at St. John. May your mighty and merciful presence give them peace and comfort as they attend to these congregations. And Lord, we also pray that you would be with Jacob and Morgan as Jacob finishes school and Morgan completes her internship. Pray for their upcoming move to Idaho Falls. And thank you, Lord, for the talents of Jonathan and Allie, repairing and preserving the stained windows of this sanctuary. And to those who have generously given their time and talents to honor you in this earthly way, may these mere pains reflect a portion of our love and admiration for you as your light shines through them in such a powerful way on our lives and those gathered to praise you and give you all glory and honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, be with those who are suffering from illness and isolation, unemployment, homelessness, or loss of a loved one. Be with those suffering from addictions and their families as they seek your hope and strength. Give us the courage to reach out to those in need with love and compassion. Continue to bless and keep all believers in your love and care. For it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Dan. We stand together now for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our final, our closing uh, praise song, Word of God Speak, again a prayer. Word of God Speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. God has been doing that in worship today. We pray that he would continue. We sing. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Jesus is active in our world. Go and join him. Thanks be to God.